I grew up in a warm home with my family, and one of the uncles was a violinist. And when the war broke out, he was the one that told my father where he buried his violin. I compare it with me because I was, as a child, buried in a barn, in a hole, for close to two years, just like the violin was buried. My name is Rachel Stiebel, and my book is The Violin. I was born on April 24, 1935, in the city Kolomea. It was Poland at that time, and it was the east-southern part of Poland, which was called Galicia. I lived on a farm with my grandparents and with two uncles, which were two younger brothers of my father. I loved very much living on a farm. Uh, I had friends across the road, and I played with them. I ran around freely because we had a German Shepherd dog, which I called Bobby, and he was my companion constantly. The Germans, of course, entered, and in 1941, they built in the city Kolomea a ghetto. I was very much crying because right at the beginning, they already were shooting some people. And my uh, grandmother, Frida, she spoke to me in Yiddish. Don't worry, you will never, ever die. You will never die. And then my uncle Velve said to me, a trace of us will survive and you'll be the one. You'll be the trace that will survive. Dark and airless. There was no room for standing or moving. When one person had to turn, all of us would have to turn. The deeper inside the bunker, the less air we had. Turn, whisper, turn. We were all prisoners of the bunker, feverish and weak. Late at night, when it was snowing, the men would take turns going out to search for food. Each time they went out, we held our breaths until they returned. Days, nights, weeks, and months went on and on. Not even a glimmer that the hell would ever end. No light, no sound. Most of the time it was nearly impossible for me to distinguish between reality and fantasy, between one day and the next, between night and day. Turn, whisper, turn. All communication in the bunker was conducted in whispers. I had not used my voice to speak for so long, I had forgotten what it sounded like. I invented a world of dreams to escape the reality of my life. I often pictured Uncle Velville with his beautiful violin. It was made in the style of Stradivarius by a German violin maker named Steiner. Velville was so proud of it and the fact that he owned such an instrument. In my mind, I replayed the stories Bobby Frieda told me of Velville taking the horse and carriage or getting on his bicycle and going to his violin lessons. In his hands, the violin sang. Turn, whisper, turn. I dreamed about the end of the war. And all what I went through is in my mind, in my heart, but I didn't discuss with anybody. Only when I met my husband, Adam, who is also a child Holocaust survivor and the sole survivor of his family, we exchanged our past and he told me about him, how he escaped and survived, and I told him about mine. I 
I have a feeling that they still pray for us. I know they're proud of me that I remember and that I tell the world what happened. It's hard. <laughs>